Welcome back to Morning in America. NASA is aiming for the moon again with a second attempt to launch its Artemis 1 mega rocket. It's coming tomorrow. The launch was called off Monday due to engine trouble during the countdown. NASA's managers have changed fueling procedures to make sure the rocket blasts off this time without a hitch. The goal is to eventually use the Artemis program for human exploration of the moon and then Mars. Joining us now is Colonel Terry Vertz, a former NASA astronaut who spent seven months in space during his career. Good morning, Colonel. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, let's get down to it. Predict. Is it going to happen or not? <laughs> oh, man. I, if I could, if I could uh, predict that, I'd, I'd be uh, guessing on the stock market. I, you know, I think there's a decent chance it's going to happen, but with a rocket like this, you've got Florida summer afternoon weather to deal with and and who knows but it's probably 50 50. well that's exactly the first thing i was going to ask you uh, before tell me if it's going to happen or not the launch window is between 2 17 p.m eastern and 4 17 p.m eastern the launch window on monday was early in the morning now i went to college in south florida and uh afternoon thunderstorms are just a fact of life this time of year so what determines that launch window and why is that where it is well, uh, a big part of it is you're launching towards the moon, so you have to wait until the time of day when uh, the launch pad is lim lined up and the, and the moon is in the right direction. So that's going to change every day with that. Um, morning launches in Florida are much better in the summertime because of those thunderstorms, but unfortunately the, the, the moon is not cooperating, and in order to get to the moon, you got to launch in the afternoon tomorrow. Imagine traveling and having a destination, but the city destination just moves on you. That's interesting. Um, now, Mike Serafin is the Artemis mission manager, and he said that there is a marginal increase in risk over this launch. Now, how much risk is tolerable here with NASA and this gigantic rocket program? That's a great question because they've got a lot riding on this. It's been uh, in work since 2005, you know, there's a lot of eyeballs on Artemis tomorrow. So they they certainly want it to be successful, but it's the first flight of a really complicated rocket. And so there, there's going to be a lot of risk. Uh, what they do is they they try and be as smart as they can. They try and figure out every possible bad case scenario and then uh, minimize that risk. And then at the end of the day, you have to accept some. If it was 100 percent safe, it wouldn't be accomplishing very much. So on Monday, one of the things that held this launch back and got it scrubbed was a, a bad signal from a sensor in an engine. They thought they might have had a leak. Now they think they just have a bad sensor. So maybe you and I have a leak in our tire and we decide to ignore it because we think the sensor is bad. But this is a multi-million dollar <laughs> rocket. And they said they're just going to ignore the bad sensor reports. I've never seen anything like that in NASA. What could happen if they're wrong and the sensor is well, not broken the, and something the, bad has happened? The thing to know is there's not just like one or two sensors. There's probably thousands or tens of thousands of sensors. It's such a complicated rocket. And a big part of my job as a space shuttle pilot when I was at NASA was to look at uh, data coming in and figure out, was that a real problem or was it not? And uh, a lot of times you get a bad sensor because, like I said, there's literally millions of pieces on this. So they know what they're doing and the engineers and managers they're very focused on this one particular valve. With that one valve, there's probably hundreds or thousands of others that, that have similar sensors. So if something does go wrong, are we talking about like launch pad explosion here? Or, you know, what's kind of the best, worst thing that could happen? I don't know how to ask that question. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, well hopefully nothing goes wrong. You know, we've had a really long string of successful launches of all different types of rockets from, from Florida. Um, but, you know, if, it, if the rocket blows up during ascent, there's a, something called a range safety officer, and it's like a, a, you know, a Hollywood movie. There's a guy with a red button, and you can, you can actually kind of rip the rocket apart. So if it's not going in the right direction, they actually terminate the rocket. There's some NASA terminology for you, but they basically will blow it up and make sure it lands in the ocean. So if you're driving a boat tomorrow, don't drive your, uh, don't drive your, your speedboat out there to the east of the launch pad. So if things go wrong, they can blow the rocket up and make sure it doesn't fall back to land, that it falls back to the ocean instead. Yeah, absolutely. And it was a, that, that's fine for unmanned rockets, but in the space shuttle, they had the same ability. And it was kind of a sobering moment when we learned that, hey, there's somebody there who's got his finger on a button that might blow us up in the space shuttle. Thankfully, nothing like that obviously ever happened. But it's, they want to protect people in Orlando, of course. We're, we're not going to let the rocket cause damage on land. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that is a sobering thought. I don't know if sobering <laughs> even covers it. Um, wow. Okay, that is 
Uh, Colonel Terry Verts, he spent seven months in space. He has piloted a space shuttle. Liftoff for Artemis 1 is now scheduled for 2.17 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, but that launch window goes until 4.17. We'll see if it happens. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.